Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one ritual at a time, back with the man, myth, the legend that called the great deleveraging. We're now weeks into it. It is such an amazing call. Go look at the playlist, Mr. Greg Dickerson. How are you doing, sir? Good to see you, Michael. How are you? Oh, man, this is, a, this is the topic I have been waiting for, right? We are experiencing pain in the market. What I am looking for, however, is when does this impact the consumer, right? Uh, as we know, statistically, quote unquote, the rich are in the stock market, right? There's a, you know, I don't know what percentage of the folks that actually are in the market, but I want to know when the average consumer is impacted, because I think that will impact real estate. Right now, with it impacts crypto at the margins, stocks at the margins, probably hurts the Bay Area, but uh, when, when does the consumer get nervous? When do they stop shopping? When do they stop spending? When do they start saving cash? Any ideas? Well, you know, from an inflation standpoint, that's already happening. You know, mm -hmm. that that's behavior is already changing because of inflation. But when it comes to, you know, the markets and real estate and things like that, when people's wealth starts to deteriorate, mm -hmm. um, when it becomes, you know, bear market territory. So when you start getting down 20, 30 percent for a okay. sustained amount of time, people start to think a little harder, change behavior and start to get a little bit worried. And, you know, Wall Street has conditioned people for so long to just, you know, have the long-term vision, have the long-term view. And, you know, it's it's worked. It's been great. You know, markets have been up on average of the history of the markets, you know, 10% 10, 10 a year. Um, you know, I went back and looked at how much they've been up since 2009. And it's, you know, it's incredible. I mean, you're talking, what, 13, 1400% NASDAQ, four or 500% Dow and S&P. Mm. You know, when you go look at the, uh, you know, March 2020 run up, I think it's a couple hundred percent, you know, it might be in the NASDAQ now might be a hundred percent up or something. So people have been conditioned to buy the dip, to look long view, mm -hmm. time in the market, not time in the market and things like that. So unless it's, unless they really see a huge, huge chunk of their uh, portfolio go away, it's not really going to do a whole lot, um, you know, right now, but you start getting down 20, 30%. When it gets like it was back in 2008, nine, that changes people's behavior where people have to go back to work. They have to change their budgets. That, that, that's exactly where I'm looking at this. There is some, because right now we've had the great resignation. Uh, we've had more and more baby boomers retire like a two or three years early. Uh, at some point, they're going to come back. They're going to be like, well, I got to get a job because my portfolio is down 50%. My house is worth 30% less, whatever it is. At, hey, yeah. my parents, I was, I, you know, I was there when they went through it. They lost, you know, almost probably 50 or 60% in 2008 and 9 when the market tanked. They lost more than half of their retirement yeah. uh, accounts. Their house value went down because all real estate was going down. Mm -hmm. They took it on, you know, now they were still working and they were still earning, you know, but they're looking at going, man, we need to rethink, you know, yeah. retirement. <laughs> retirement is going to be different. <laughs> Right. And, you know, that never came back full circle. You know, yeah. uh, my mom ended up, you know, she she ended up basically, you know, taking the equity out of her house because she sold her house at the peak, you know, here recently. And, you know, mm -hmm. that's that's basically what has sustained her. That retirement account's gone, you wow. know, because it never came back. What people forget is when you're down 50 percent, you know, now you need to be up 75 percent to get back where you were. Mm -hmm. You know, yet you, you know it's not like you're just down one day. You next. Gotta, yeah, you got to go up a hundred, right? You're at a hundred, goes down fifty. You got to go up a hundred percent to get back to a hundred. It's yeah, so crazy that math. never happened for them, even with the markets going up like it like it was, just because of the the things that they were invested in. So um, now the most recent example would be what happened in you know March of 2020. You know, moving forward, a lot of people have retired early. They've retired on their stock portfolio increases on their trading, their ability to trade, mm -hmm. crypto, things like that. So a lot of people have exited the workforce and retired early. Mm -hmm. So if they start seeing these portfolios unwind, you know, then you're going to have, you know, which would be a good thing right now because there's a lot of jobs. So, yeah. you know, they're going to have to get back in the workforce. And I've got, you know, some clients I'm working with that, you know, bought, you know, crypto uh, way back in the day and they're, they're looking really good. And I asked them, I said, well, what would you do if it all just goes down to, you know, nothing again? And they're like, well, just go back to work. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. So th that's where I'm at right now is, is where, where does this impact the consumer? Because again, as you just said, we, we, the workforce, what they call the participation rate is down 2% from historical averages. There's 11 million or 10.7 million job openings, 3.9% unemployment, all of these things, right? But I've been doing this a while, right? But, so let's talk 2020, March of 2020. That fall was very sudden, very fast. It, and obviously the Fed came in and bailed everybody out. 
that was so fast and really was a V-shaped recovery that nobody really felt that, right? Nobody's for, very, I mean, I'm sure there's some people, but nobody really cashed out at the bottom, sold everything. And, and most people like, oh, thank God I'm safe. However, the dot-com era, that five, six, seven years, there were people that retired early, went to cash, and they never came back. So uh, it, it is going to be interesting because I think there's a lot of people that retired early that if this thing gets bad, we're talking 30 plus percent. We, uh, the, the joke I'm looking for, Greg, is my 401k is now a 201k. Yeah, that's you know that's that's, that's not that's not a joke, but uh, no, no, that's no, no, I didn't that, ain't, that ain't funny. That, no, it's not funny. But that's when I see that in the media or I see that like on CNBC. That's when I know the bottom might be. You know, yeah, weird. we saw that in 0809, and yeah. you know, and for everybody watching, this is how it happens. So today, the Dow, you know, is down. You know what, two percent, six, seven hundred points right now as we're talking. Mm -hmm. S and P's down a couple of two and a half percent. Nasdaq's down three percent. Um, so you know, Nasdaq is probably now with that in technical bear market territory. It's probably down twenty percent right now from highs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're probably fifteen percent S and P and Dow collectively. And if you look at that, that's been chipped away over the last month. And if you go back and compare the March, um, well, not the March, but the 2008-9 crash, it didn't all fall at once. Yeah. It it kind of did what it's doing now, yeah. a little bit of buy the dip, a little bit of, you know, a little bit of that. And then bam, it went off the cliff when, you know, the bank started failing. Exactly. And, you know, the equivalent to that event is the Fed coming out strong and saying, we're done. And, you know, there's a lot of leverage in the system. So when I say the great deleveraging, it's not just the markets. There's leverage, you know, the stock markets, there's leverage in credit markets, in yes. the banking system. There's a 2009 banking crisis level amount of leverage out there in other ways in wow. the system right now that, that, you know, is teetering. So when you think about that, that's the kind of stuff that the Fed knows that they're dealing with mm -hmm. and the conversation is going on behind the scenes. But for everybody watching, go back and look at that, you know, the markets and how they kind of work their way down from 2008 all the way to the March bottom. And it was March of, of 2009 when the stock market bottomed, um, you know, during that period, it, it took quite a while for it to get there. It wasn't an overnight thing. Yeah, that, and that was the thing. That's the thing about the markets, right? If it's quick and sudden, a la 87, like Black Monday or whatever they called it, or the March, you know, shut the economy down event, it happens so fast, so sudden, you almost can't react. You're like, wow, what just happened? Where in the dot com era, is it just was like a slow, like a death by a thousand cuts. It was down, down, and then I, I forget who went first. Like Bear Stearns went, and then this one mm -hmm. went, and and then it just and you get the little bounces along the way, you know, yeah. and, and that's what kind of sneaks up on you. And, and you have Wall Street that's conditioned everybody by the dip, by the dip, and you know everybody thinks we're going to get that V bottom recovery, which we did in March, but that was the Fed coming out saying, "Look, we'll buy whatever we oh. need to buy." Yeah, you know, that we're was... going to prop the markets up and. You know, we'll see what they do this time. And, and you know, but the good news is it does create opportunity because eventually you do find the bottom. The question is, with not the question, but what we know now is without the Fed intervening, you're not going to get the parabolic super cycle run that we've had since 2008-9 when QE began. A lot of people don't realize that. That's when it started. 2008-9 um, is when they started QE. Japan tried it before that. You know, it didn't work out so well for them. We are at the end of that you know, run up uh, since 2008, nine that we are deleveraging from. So that's when I say the great deleveraging, that's what I'm talking about. It's that, you know, how long has that been now? Um, 13 years, 13 year cycle that we've been in. And that's what you see in these market cycles. They're usually yeah. 13, 14, 15 years, somewhere in that range. That's yeah, a lot of stuff going on. Um, again, you got to be following Mr. Greg Dickerson on YouTube. He puts out stuff every day. It's amazing content. Greg, how do you want them to follow you, find you? Yeah, gregdickerson.com. All my info is there. YouTube channel, podcast, gregdickerson.com. Thanks, bud.